A Ghostly Wife by Lal Bihari Day Once on a time there lived a Brahman who had married a wife and who lived in the same house with his mother Near his house was a tank on the embankment of which stood a tree on the boughs of which lived a ghost of the kind called sankchinni sankchinnis are female ghosts of white complexion they usually stand at the dead of the night at the foot of trees and look like sheets of white cloth one night the brahman's wife had occasion to go to the tank and as she went she brushed by a sankchinni who stood near on which the she ghost got very angry with the woman seized her by the throat climbed into her tree and thrust her into a hole in the trunk there the woman lay almost dead with fear the ghost put on the clothes of the woman and went into the house of the brahman neither the brahman nor his mother had any inkling of the change the brahman thought his wife returned from the tank and the mother thought that it was her daughter in law next morning the mother in law discovered some change in her daughter in law her daughter in law she knew was constitutionally weak and languid and took a long time to do the work of the house but she had apparently become quite a different person all of a sudden she had become very active she now did the work of the house in an incredibly short time suspecting nothing the old woman said nothing either to her son or to her daughter in law on the contrary she inly rejoiced that her daughter in law had turned over a new leaf but her surprise became every day greater and greater the cooking of the household was done in much less time than before when the mother in law wanted the daughter in law to bring anything from the next room it was brought in much less time than was required in walking from one room to the other the ghost instead of going inside the next room would stretch a long arm for ghosts can lengthen or shorten any limb of their bodies from the door and get the thing one day the old woman observed the ghost doing this she ordered her to bring a vessel from some distance and the ghost unconsciously stretched her hand to several yards distance and brought it in a trice the old woman was struck with wonder at the sight she said nothing to her but spoke to her son both mother and son began to watch the ghost more narrowly one day the old woman knew that there was no fire in the house and she knew also that her daughter in law had not gone out of doors to get it and yet strange to say the hearth in the kitchen room was quite in a blaze she went in and to her infinite surprise found that her daughter in law was not using any fuel for cooking but had thrust into the oven her food which was blazing brightly the old mother told her son what she had seen and they both concluded that the young woman in the house was not his real wife but a sea ghost the son witnessed those very acts of the ghost which his mother had seen an oja or an exorcist was therefore sent for the exorcist came and wanted in the first instance to ascertain whether the woman was a real woman or a ghost for this purpose he lighted a piece of turmeric and set it below the nose of the supposed woman now this was an infallible test as no ghost whether male or female can put up with the smell of burnt turmeric the moment the lighted turmeric was taken near her she screamed aloud 
and ran away from the room it was now plain that she was either a ghost or a woman possessed by a ghost the woman was caught hold of by main force and asked who she was at first she refused to make any disclosures on which the oja took up his slippers and began belaboring her with them then the ghost said with a strong nasal accent for all ghosts speak through nose that she was a sankachini that she lived on a tree by the side of the tank that she had seized the young brahmani and put her in the hollow of a tree because one night she had touched her and that if any person went to the hole the woman would be found the woman was brought from the tree almost dead the ghost was again so beaten after which process on her declaring solemnly that she would not again do any harm to the brahman and his family she was released from the spell of the oja and sent away and the wife of the brahman recovered slowly after which the brahman and his wife lived many years happily together and begat many sons and daughters